king, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So, um, but we needed a building. We can't build a building, so we must use an existing building. Um, so we, we looked for, um, for basically for factories that had been um, were com that had been abandoned, but the factory was in good shape, like the company had gone bankrupt or something. So we found an Electrolux factory in Memphis. In Memphis, that's why it's in Memphis, um, home of Elvis, um, and also one of the oldest. I think it was the capital of ancient Egypt. Um, <laughs> And uh, it was actually a very nice factory that, uh, I don't know, for whatever reason, that Electrolux had left. Um, and uh, so that, that gave us shelter for the computers. Uh, then we needed power. The, the, uh, we needed um, at least 120 megawatts at first, but the building only had 15 megawatts. And ultimately, for 200,000 mega, 200, GPUs, we needed a quarter gigawatt. So we um, initially uh, leased uh, a whole bunch of um, Generators. So we have generators on one side of the building, just one, trailer after trailer, trailer of generators until we can get the utility power to, to come in. Um, and then, but then we also need cooling. So on the other side of the building, it was just trailer after trailer of, of cooling. So we leased about a quarter of the mobile cooling capacity of the United States uh, on the one, other side of the building. Um, then we needed to get the GPUs all installed, and they're all liquid cooled. So in order to achieve the density necessary, this is a liquid cooled system. So we had to get all the plumbing for the liquid cooling. Nobody had ever done a liquid cooling uh, data center at scale. So this was an incredibly dedicated effort by a very talented team to achieve that outcome. Um, and I may think, now, now it's going to work. Nope. Um, the, the issue is that the, the power fluctuations for a GPU cluster are dramatic. So it's, it's like a, a, this giant symphony that is taking place, like, a, like imagine having a, a symphony with 100,000 or 200,000 participants in the, in the symphony, and the whole orchestra will go quiet and loud in you know, 100 milliseconds. And so this caused massive power fluctuations, so then, um, which, which then caused the generators to lose their minds, and they, they weren't expecting this. So to buffer the power, we then uh, used Tesla mega packs uh, to smooth out the power. So the, the mega packs had to be reprogrammed. So with, with the XAI, we, working with Tesla, we reprogrammed the mega packs to be able to deal with these dramatic power fluctua fluctuations to smooth out the power so that the computers could actually run properly. And um, that, that worked. Uh, it was quite tricky. And, uh, and then, but even at that point, you still have to make the computers all communicate effectively. Mm -hmm. So all the networking had to be solved and uh, debugging a zillion network cables, um, a debugging nickel at 4 in the morning. Or we solved it like 420 four, <laughs> roughly 4.20 AM. Yeah, was when we figured out like there's some, well, there were a whole bunch of issues. Well, like, one that was like a BIOS mismatch. Yeah, exactly. The BIOS was not set up correctly. <laughs> yeah. we, we had to uh, div our LSPCI outputs between two different machines, one that was working. Yeah. One that was not working. Yeah. Many, many, many other things. Yeah, there was, I mean, <laughs> yeah, exactly. This would go on for a long time if we actually listed all the things. But yeah. you know, it's like interesting. It's, like, it's not like, oh, we just magically made it happen. You had to break down the problem, just like Grok does for reasoning, uh, into the constituent elements and then solve each of the constituent elements in order to uh, achieve uh, a, a, a coherent training cluster mm -hmm. in a, a period of time that is a small fraction of what anyone else was, could do it in. And then once the training cluster was up and running and we could use it, now we had to make sure that it actually stays healthy throughout, which is its own right. giant challenge. And then we had to get every single detail of the training right in order to get a Grokery level model, which is actually really, really hard. So um, we don't know if there are any other models out there that have Grokery's capabilities, but whoever trains a model better than Grokery has to be extremely good at the 